Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation as part of the Industry Insight webinar series. The topic this time is Better Billing for Lawyers. Speaking today will be Joshua Lemon. Joshua is an attorney admitted to the New York Bar. He studied law at St. Louis University School of Law, obtaining a Juris Doctorate and a Certificate in International and Comparative Law. During this time, Joshua clerked for the Missouri Attorney General, helping prosecute discrimination claims on behalf of Missouri citizens. He also studied European Union Law at the University of Georgia School of Law's Brussels Legal Seminar. When working for Thomson Reuters as publishing departments in both the United States and Canada, he helped legal practitioners improve their services. Joshua currently serves as lawyer in residence for Clio, providing legal scholarship and research skills to the leading cloud-based practice management platform headquartered in Vancouver, Canada. He's been a guest lecturer for movements like legal hacking and legal technology at schools like MIT, Suffolk Law, and Vanderbilt. He's also spoken before organizations like reInvent Law and the ABA Law Practice Futures Initiative. The presentation today will be followed by a Q&A. Please enter your questions into the question box in the webinar panel on the right side of your screen. All questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. We are recording this webinar and we will be sending a video and a follow-up email in a few days. We will also post the video on our blog over at www.lawtechnologytoday.org. Thank you all for joining us. We'll now begin the webinar. Thanks, Austin. So welcome everybody to Belling Billing, Better Billing for Lawyers. I'm Joshua Lennon. As Austin mentioned, I'm an attorney admitted into New York and I'm the lawyer in residence at Clio and that's a, a scholar position that enables me to research things like billing for law firms, what works and what doesn't. And I'm very fortunate to have access to an incredible data set at Clio that's going to come into play in today's presentation. So what's our agenda? There's a lot to cover. We're gonna take a look at billing woes and the problems that law firms are having. We're gonna talk about the fact that you have a huge volume of billing data and that there are some great processes that we can start to extrapolate from that data. And we'll distill those all the way down to best billing practices. We'll have a few walk away conclusions for you and then we'll take questions. It's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. So billing woes. We know from a 2014 survey done by the Law Practice Advisor that law firms are having a lot of problems when it comes to collecting on the bills that they're owed. 73% of small law firms surveyed say they experience past due client accounts. Firms with past due bills tend to affect 10 to almost 40% of their client accounts. And nearly half say that collecting on invoices 90 days past due is unlikely or very unlikely. They're just gone, that's money out the door. And this was a big number that jumped out to me. Um, over 70% of lawyers offer discounts prior to invoicing. Now this is really interesting. That means that before your client even sees the bill, you're writing it down. You're just assuming they're going to say no to the amounts and just wiping away the work that you have done, such that not only can they never say no to it, they don't even know that it exists. You are just handing them free money. Now, why are law firms doing this? They're doing this because for most small law firms, the time that you spend working does not equal money. So we know that most small law firms reported spending about eight hours per month on billing. The average number of hours worked in a day were around nine hours, and the average hours billed were around seven hours. I'm gonna to touch on that in a little bit, but those numbers are wildly inflated. And about 40% of the time that a small law firm is working, they're not actually billing time. And let's take a look at that at a chart. And that's this chart right here. If you are in a small law firm of one to two lawyers, almost half of your time is spent on work that is not getting you paid. Now, it doesn't mean it's unimportant work. It could be business development, it could be licensing, it could be office maintenance, to be perfectly honest, all things that need to be done for a lawyer and for a business, but it's taking you away from the paying work, the things that will get you paid that day. And so, if a lawyer is estimating that they're working nine hours a day and they claim that 40% of that time is unbilled, that is not billing seven hours a day. It's just not going to happen. Now, what's interesting is in the same survey, as we add lawyers and presumably add staff, we're seeing that a lawyer's realization rate or utilization rate, I'm sorry, actually goes up. So the more you're able to focus on being a lawyer and not being an office manager, the more chances you have to make revenue. 
and that plateaus right about here at 11 to 20. So there's something that happens right here where a lawyer has a consistent volume of work, uh, fewer distractions when it comes to that work, and they're able to just knuckle down and be a lawyer. And they start losing that once you get to 20 plus. And I'm assuming that's because of rainmaking and the focus on rainmaking that happens to a part of these law firms. But as you can see, if you're in the left hand of this chart, you're working very, very hard, but you're not necessarily getting paid for that work. And what's I think more troubling is that a lot of these law firms don't even really know the 60-40 split. So they've been asked, do you have a billing process? And while we have yes documented in this bright yellow here at 43%, we have a yes undocumented and a no. And I'm going to say undocumented is just as good as a no. If you do not have a clear checklist of a billing process, and I'll show you an example of things that should be part of your billing process, if it's not written down, if it's not taught to all of your timekeepers, if it's not a cheat sheet that they can refer to on a daily basis, you don't have a billing process, and you're setting your firm up for more billing woes. And then lastly, we asked, uh, the survey asked, does your firm analyze client billing trends? Can you see, for example, that certain practice areas are more profitable for you as a law firm? Do you see that you're actually spending more time per client than you are in a different practice area? Or do you have a client that's taking all of your time, but then also refusing to pay your bills and actually arguing down for discounts, even though they're the ones taking your time? And what's interesting is most law firms said no, 72%. They do not have a way to analyze client billing trends. So you're leaving yourself in the dark. Not only do you have undocumented processes, they're eating a lot of your time, at least eight hours a month, for example, on billing. And you can't figure out where all of this time is just going out the door. So we need to find a way to start tracking that data. And that's why we should talk about tapping into the billing data within your law firm. For example, do you know what the lockup is in your law firm? And lockup is unbilled work in progress plus debtor days. And we know for most small law firms that the average lockup is between 90 to 120 days. So if you bill one hour today, you are not likely to see that paid until about 120 days from now. So that means that it sits around until the end of the month. You issue your bill. The client doesn't pay your bill. You have to chase down the client to pay your bill. Eventually, they pay your bill. That's what lockup is. And that's a huge amount of productivity that's just gone out the door when you deal with something like that. So in the UK, when they did a study on lockup, they found that one third of UK law firms had a lockup in excess of 150 days. Um, so that's one third of the people attending today. You are literally three to four months away from getting paid for the hour that you're billing today. And the rest of you, you're just under three months away from getting paid. So this is some scary data. And if you're having trouble with cash flow in your law firm, this is actually one of the reasons why is unfortunately, your clients are holding on to the money that they owe you instead of paying you. But you're also actually making it difficult for them to pay you because it's work in progress. You haven't sent them the bill. They don't know the status of the case and the value that you're generating to them. So how do we start tapping into this data to avoid things like lockup? Well, let's take a look at what lawyers track. These are all things that you currently track as a part of your law firm. And it ends up being a huge volume of data that you can start to really pull a lot of information from. And the way you generate this data is the same things that you should be doing anyway as a part of your daily practice. You should be sending your bills. You should be tracking which bills are paid. You should know what payment methods are being used to pay them. You should be tracking time concurrent to the work that you're doing rather than going back at the end of the week. You should be having custom fields that actually highlight different values from the client. You should be able to track uh, expenses. And you should be applying consistency in your data tracking activities. It's not good to do it on Monday and not uh, follow up on Tuesday or Wednesday. It's got to be a daily event. This is a discipline that we're promoting right here. But once you do that, 
you can actually determine a wide variety of information about your law firm. First of all, the financial health of your firm is something right there. Most law firms are not able to run three simple accounting reports about their law firm. So your profit loss statement, your cash flow account statement, and your snapshot. So how much funds do you have in the bank right now? And the reason you can't run that is because you're not necessarily keeping all of your business metrics as well as your work in progress in one place. Then you're also not able to take a look at profitability of clients over time. So Clio recently ran a survey and we asked lawyers to estimate the lifetime value of a client. Right? How much money can you expect from a good paying client? And the numbers were all over the map. 3,000 lawyers responded and there wasn't a single kind of thread. And that's because most people aren't actually able to take a look at how profitable are clients over time. You aren't able to know what the average earning per case by practice area is. So if you are a family law lawyer, you may know kind of off the top of your head that you kind of sort of earn about $5,000 per divorce, but do you know the exact amount for a divorce with uh, no property in dispute, no children, versus a uh, divorce with property in dispute, versus a divorce with children. You need to be able to break this down and then also break that down even further by effort. So if I'm doing a non-contested divorce with no property issues, that effort that I have to put in that should be significantly less than if I have to put into one with property in dispute. Can I do a breakdown of that? And if I'm growing my law firm, either by caseload or by headcount, how can I measure the productivity of my associates and the projected workload of case types that I need to both remain profitable and remain busy? So how do you start doing that? Well, you need to start turning to tools that have built-in reporting, and most practice management solutions will have that. Here's a highlight of a selection of practice management reports that are available in Clio. And this one, for example, takes a look at your billing history. So my ability to take a look at certain types of aspects of my firm. For example, my accounts receivable. Do I have money owed to me that people aren't paying? And if people owe me money, that's where I should be focusing my time that day. I shouldn't be focusing my time on billing more hours to them. I should be focusing my time on phoning them up and saying, hey, you guys owe me $10,000. When should I expect to receive a payment? I can take a look at billing history, so I can track my billing activity over time. I can take a look at my invoice payment reports, right? A general ledger of payments to see my cash flow and how flush I am right now versus whether or not I need to make sure I'm bringing in more to support my business revenue. I can also dive down deeper. So the type of activities that you need to know, for example, can I really take a look at work in progress? And what work haven't I billed? And how does that impact my financial decisions for this month and the next? I can take a look at client activity. So I know clients who are taking all of my time versus those clients that are a joy to work with. These reports and more all exist within your practice management tools. But we know that lawyers aren't running them on a frequent basis, like a monthly basis. And doing so means that you don't have insight into the billing practices that you should have at your fingertips. So... What's really interesting is because Clio is so widely used, or the most widely used practice management system in the world, that we've actually started developing insights into all the different ways that lawyers work. And so we have uh, over 4.5 million matters currently stored with Clio and 40,000 law firms participating in uh, kind of a big data study where we're able to see things that work and don't work for lawyers. So for example, if you take a look at the billing data from Q1 of 2015, we know that lawyers generated approximately 115,000 bills in the first three months of 2015. And what was interesting to me is that over a third of those bills were marked paid on the same day. So we started diving into how are they getting paid on the same day that they generate their invoice. And there were three things that really popped up in terms of how the data was showing us lawyers are working. For example, we saw that a group of those lawyers were paying uh, from trust fee deposits. So they had accepted fees to be held in trust, an advanced fee deposit, and then when they generated an invoice, they were able to pay that right away from the client's trust fund. 
It was a part of their workflow. We saw another segment of those lawyers were actually doing flat fees. And so they were getting paid up front and depositing those fees directly into their operating account if their jurisdiction allowed that. Other times they were doing, depositing them as advanced fee deposits. But because they were getting paid up front, they were marking the invoice of paid. And the last bit, and this one really stood out to me, was there was a segment that also had credit card payments enabled in their account. And they would email out a bill and see the bill paid directly from the client that same day. And so these three processes show us that depending on how your firm is set up and the workflows that work for you, there are lots of ways to make sure that you do not have a lockup of 90 to 120 days. But instead, as soon as you issue your bill, you can be paid. Those people who did not have those workflows actually took 22 days to close on average. So there's all the work that they did and then it took them 22 days to mark a bill as paid. Now, whether or not it was marked paid as full, um, we don't have access to that type of data. We just know that the bills were marked as closed. So what can we learn from this? We can learn that lawyers, one, are generating a vast volume of data on what works and doesn't work within their law firms. But two, that there's really strong analysis that can be applied that impacts your day-to-day -day operations. So Clio has started taking these data and uh, data insights and publishing them in what we call our Legal Trends Report. And our last one was issued just about this time in 2016, and there's a new one coming out in about a month in 2017. But one of the insights that applies to billing is people who use services like credit card processing tended to have a 35% reduction in average payment times compared to checks. So not only was there that segment that got paid on the same day, but overall, if you're accepting a credit card, you get paid on the same day. So Clio has just started enabling this. We built two features, Trust Request and Clio Payments, that are powered by LawPay and enable lawyers to request either funds be deposited directly into trust account via a credit card payment or invoices be paid directly via a credit card payment. And that's what led to this 35% reduction in payment times. So all of this insight and more is available for you guys to take a look at in the Legal Trends Report. And I'll, uh, we'll be providing a link to where you can download a copy after today's webinar. So, yep. so where are we getting into issues? Uh, we're starting to see that billing problems happen months before you issue a bill. Your work in progress are where the problems start to occur. You're generating a lot of data, but you're not necessarily running the reports on it, even though you have access to those reports. And that you can get paid quickly, but you need a process. And it's that lack of documented process that leads to further delays. So what are some billing processes that you can use? We know the traditional ones. You bill hourly, you generate an invoice, you mail the bill, your client has sticker shock in their mailbox about a week later, and then you just wait and hope that they pay you. And what we're seeing instead is that there are modern billing options being generated all the time. So there are a variety of both traditional variants and performance-based or alternative fee arrangements that you can be using within your law firm. And what's interesting is that a lot of these alternative fee arrangements are starting to be preferred by clients. For example, we know that general counsel are looking for flat fees even when it comes to litigation and that we're seeing a rise of unbundled legal service adoption by law firms and their clients across um, a wide variety of different size law firms. And what's interesting is these alternative fee arrangements are preferred not because they're cheaper but because they're transparent. So the Altman Wild 2014 Chief Legal Officer Survey to, uh, broke down why lawyers were looking for firms with alternative fee arrangements. And it was transparency that leads the pack. Not that they were lowest price, but that they were transparent, that there was a certainty involved. And when Altman Wild dug further into this data, what they found was it wasn't necessarily the alternative fee but the ability to collaborate on strategy and its impact on pricing that really led to lawyers choosing this transparent pricing. So big law has been studying these reports for a long time, and these are some of the, uh, some of the changes that they've made to their processes. 
first, they're starting with regular time input. It's no longer acceptable in a big law firm to wait until the end of the month and then turn in a napkin with a bunch of numbers scribbled on it, or to go through your email and calendar and hope you remember all the work that you've done. Instead, you need to import your time on a daily basis. You also, at Big Law, are starting to provide their clients with digital bills and digital payment options. They've recognized the speed that comes from that and the preferences from their clients to handle things in a more modern online format. They've also found that frequent billing actually helps. So rather than um, issuing bills once a quarter at the end of an engagement, that monthly bills, uh, one, are more likely to get paid, but two, give transparency and a chance for strategy uh, conversations that are desired by clients seeking that transparent billing pricing. Uh, second to last is that they're using staff for accounting collections. It's not worth a lawyer's time to do these things. It is worth a staff member's time. And the last bit, and this one really jumped out at me, was they're discouraging write-offs. Stop writing down your data. And the reason they said that is because we have found that discounts actually reward bad clients. So if you have a late bill and you start offering discounts for the client to pay that bill, all you've done is encourage them to drag this out longer in the hope that you've generated a greater discount. And in fact, we see that firms that are discounting their bills because they are late tend to be discounting at a greater and greater percentage all the way. So a larger percentage of bills that are discounted at 30 to 39% are discounted than a percentage at 10%. You're getting desperate and they're taking advantage of you like that. And that's just a bad client move. Why are you rewarding with that? The one time I think you should be discounting your bills is when you're encouraging clients to pay early. So here, for example, is a discount feature that we have in Clio that provides an early payment discount. And you can set the discount percentage at whatever you want. It could be like 2%, could be 50%. It depends on your billing best practices. But for example, this bill is due in 30 days, but if the client pays it within 15 days, I might give them a 15% discount. And that's automatically calculated as a part of the payment process within Clio. Doing that rewards good clients, clients that are paying your bills frequently and timely. But if you're doing it for late clients, all you're doing is you're letting money walk out the door. So process is important. Discounting is not. Stop discounting your time. We're rounding the last bit. Let's take a look at billing best practices. So one, walk your client through their first bill. You should never just give them a bill and expect them to understand what it says. Uh, clients don't necessarily speak the same language as you, and they need to know what's on a bill so that they understand the value that you're bringing. So while you may deliver the bill electronically, I highly encourage that. Um, you should also schedule some time or do some outreach with them to offer to walk them through their first bill. Once you do that, you'll find that any subsequent bills, they're much more likely to pay them just as is. Billing best practice two, don't wait to send a bill. So many lawyers uh, will end an engagement and then wait till the end of the month to send a bill. And as we know from Jay Foomberg, how to start and build a law practice, there's what's called the client cur curve of gratitude. And you really want to hit them like as soon as possible at the top here, right? So if you allow more time to pass, they are less likely to pay your bill. You want to hit them right when they say, that's a fantastic lawyer. No other lawyer could have done this. I owe them. So timing is everything. So if you're doing a matter and it closes on the fifth day of the month, don't wait till the 30th day of the month to send a bill. Immediately log on to your practice management solution and send that, send that bill. You should also send detailed bills. And we worked with a law firm out of Toronto called Alluvian, and they have some best practices that they've documented. Things that they require their associates to put in a bill are in their time entries that show up on bills in order to show both respect and clarity for their client. So, for example, if it's a phone call or an email, it's never a follow-up, which unfortunately just looks like a big F you to the client. 
but instead it's regarding and then they type out what it's regarding. They don't call the client the client in a very impersonal format. They call them by their name. And these little details, while you think are unnecessary, actually personalize the bill and give a higher level of understanding and interpretation and agreement by the client and make them more likely to pay the bill. Now, how do they do this? They take advantage of a feature within their practice management system called Tech Snippets that enables them to create these short little anagrams, no, acronyms, I'm sorry, acronyms, that automatically expand out into a full phrase when they type them. So in their timer, they type in EMTC, and what shows up on the notes for that time entry, email to client regarding, and then they type what it was regarding. And it's this attention to detail, but also a labor saving device that makes it very easy for them to have consistent, intelligent, interpretable bills by their clients. Best, billing best practice four, make it easy to get paid. That definitely means uh, providing your clients with options to pay you either up front at the beginning of the opportunity with an advanced fee deposit or a flat fee, uh, depending on your jurisdiction, and online payments. I can't stress that enough. If you don't have that, you're leaving money on the table. Billing best practice five, get paid first. As we saw, one third of bills in Clio can get paid on the third uh, on the same day they're issued. And that's if you are clear at communicating to your client on the need for that and using a feature like a trust request to document the amount of money that's requested to be held in trust that can then be transferred on your behalf. Uh, billing best practice six, don't skip trust accounting and regulatory duties. Just because you're using these tools doesn't mean that you don't have to document them fully. So make sure you're choosing a practice management solution that has integrated trust accounting, that has integrated credit card processing that handles it in an ethical fashion for you. And billing best practice seven, don't let unpaid bills sit. So here are a couple recommendations on how to adjust for that, especially if you have some bills that are out there. You can use, for example, fund advance systems like Fundbox that enables you to take outstanding invoices and take an advance against those from a service. So for example, we have uh, an outstanding invoice of $5,000. I've got a client who's gonna pay me in 30 days, but I may be having a cash flow crunch now for things like payroll or rent. Fundbox will actually cover that amount and then work with you on a payment plan when that bill comes due by your client such that you've covered your cash flow. So it's very easy and available to you. And that's a tool that integrates with Clio, for example. Another tool that integrates with Clio that actually enhances billing is Invoice Sherpa. And I really like Invoice Sherpa because as we learned from big law firm billing processes, you have accounts and billing staff handle the work. A lawyer shouldn't be handling accounts and billing. And so what they do is they take the bills from Clio and they'll run things like custom scheduling and reminders. They will send out reminders to the client that, hey, your bill is due in five days. You should pay that. And they can also give invoice reminders, letting a client know if they have a pass due, right, and reminding them. And what this does is this automates the collection process such that you don't have to do it. And you can focus instead on your paying clients and the work that they're providing for you. And what's really interesting is Invoice Sherpa can also set up recurring payments. And this is a feature we're looking to build in Clio. This is a great way to handle it outside of that. So if you have a client that handles a subscription model with you or maybe is uh, doing installment payments over time, you can use a tool like Invoice Sherpa to automate that process for you such that every month you're not having to generate a bill and send it out and hopefully it gets paid, but instead have this taken care of for you. So in conclusion, while many law firms have billing trouble, there are a couple things that you can do to just get rid of them. Better billing starts before you send the bill. Have a process now to generate an intelligent, transparent bill. Send that bill consistently and frequently and use alternative fee arrangements or automated tools to avoid collections. 